，所有在 1.2 版本前更新的五星圣遗物，现在都可以在环圣奥迹系统中进行转化获取了。So I don't know if the news of the artifact strong box getting updated was as big for some people as it was for me, but there is going to be a lot of domains that I never step foot in again. Nobody likes you. I also expect that with the release of Sumeru, there's going to be a lot of new and returning players to Genshin Impact. Even some current players already don't really use the strong box because the artifact sets that were in there just weren't the best. Some of these sets being added to the strong box are some of the best sets in the game, and unfortunately, they are paired in a domain with some of the worst artifact sets in the game, which made them a whole lot less desirable to farm compared to a very efficient domain like Shemanawa as an emblem domain, which just has insane value. So with that in mind, I have made something. Of a reference chart, you could call it a guide, but I feel like there are way too many caveats to just make something that looks like this and tell all the information. So I'll do my best to explain some of it. Characters in yellow mean that this is basically their best in slot artifact set, and you're not going to get any better, at least not while playing them in their optimal roles. Which is why you basically see every animo character in the Fiora Descent column. Of course, you could be playing them in a Geo team or a team with Shao as the main DPS, where you don't really need the Fiora Descent shred, and that is just one of the many caveats. But in most situations, this will be. Their best artifact set. Pink means they primarily want the two set. Alongside another one, usually attack percent or HP percent or whatever a character's main stat tends to be. Red indicates more of a niche. Thundering Fury helps Ben break shields faster by reducing the cooldown of his skill. And in the case of Shin Yan, well, she's just kind of a niche character anyway. And building her as a Fizz DPS is kind of even more niche. Quite frankly, I don't really think she belongs in that color. I just did it. What it's whatever. Feel free to get mad at me. All three or less Shin Yan mains watching this. As for the characters with no colors at all, they're just either not overwhelmingly strong with the specific choice or they. Have so many that are close together. It's just kind of choose whatever you want. First off, let's get something out of the way. These particular sets. They're kind of garbage. Sure, some of them have some very rare niche uses. You can use Bolide with a lot of characters if you always have a shield like Zhong Li. Lava Walker can even be used in some team comps, just like weapons like Lion's Roar or Dragon's Bane can. The main thing here being is you shouldn't be trying to farm for these artifact sets. If you happen to get a really good set, sure, you can use it. You can try it. Maybe it'll be good for you because ultimately substats are what determine a good artifact set, which usually leaves these kind of artifact sets just being used as off pieces. You know you. Get good ones while you're farming for the better sets, and you just stick these on whatever characters you can. Archaic Petra would be in the really bad category, but it it does have some uses like Wendy Wong or a more DPS oriented Zhong Li, for example. But the four piece is something I would never recommend farming for. I would much rather just have Noblesse Oblige or Tenacity of the Millilev. For me, I've always considered the Petra Bolite domain to be the absolute worst domain to spend your resin on. I consider it to just be deleting your resin outright. Honestly, though, the Thundering Fury domain barely any better. It may have more characters in the column, but let's be honest, a lot of people aren't going to use Thundering Fury Bennett. A lot of people don't build Kaching. Lisa's underused as you would expect a starter character to often be, and many people prefer Tenacity of the Millilev on Fischl for a constant buff, which results in that domain being a rather trash domain to farm. We all know that resin is a very precious resource that we get so little of every day, so we've got to make sure we spend it wisely if we're looking to progress through the game as quickly as possible. Which leads to this. We have all known for quite some time that the Emblem of Severed Fate domain is by far the most resin efficient domain in the game pretty much. It has strong competition with the Peak of Vindanir with the Heart of Depths and Blizzard Strayer set, but that kind of depends on who you're trying to build. So realistically, if you're looking to spend your resin as efficiently as humanly possible and maximize your usage of the new strong box, you're going to be spending most of your time in domains like the Emblem domain or the Blizzard Strayer domain. The Pale Flame Tenacity to the Middle Left domain is also a very strong domain, but it has a little bit more caveats and more specific character requirements. For example, if you have Eula and you want to build her, or if you're going to get her the next time she comes around, this is going to be a domain you're going to have to farm. At least until the day comes where they add this stuff to the strong box, but I wouldn't count on that at least until maybe 4.0 at this rate. The same exact logic applies to the husk set, except for the problem that Clam isn't nearly as useful as Tenacity to the Millilev. That 30k may seem really nice when you're first starting out and your account isn't 
insanely strong yet, but the stronger your account gets, the worse that 30k is going to be in comparison. Whereas Tenacity to the Millilith is going to keep making your character stronger with that same attack buff forever. Both sets, they have their value, it's just I think that Tenacity to the Millilith has a little bit more going for it. Then we have the Echoes and Vermilion set. If you're farming for Shao, of course, you're probably going to find yourself here. At least, maybe. You might still be clinging on to two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Viridus and Veneer. That's fine. You probably have insane substats on those pieces. But speaking of two sets, that's why this domain is actually not too bad. The four-piece may not be used on a lot of people. Four-piece Echoes can be used on characters like Yoimiya or Ayato, but generally I just recommend alternatives. As for the Vermilion set, as the game currently stands, Shao is really the only character that can actually support this set. But once again, this artifact's domain strength is the fact that you get double 18% attack sets, which is really good for a character like Shenna that basically just wants as much attack percent as she can possibly get. Despite that, I still wouldn't recommend newer players or people who are really looking to increase the power of their account to spend any resin here. I mean, unless they're really trying for Xiao. Which you could also say the same thing about the Husk domain. If you're not really trying to build a DPS Ito or a DPS Noel, not really much of a reason to spend your resin there. This is also not me saying that you should spend just every ounce of resin you get in the emblem or the blizzard strayer domains of course after you get so many good sets and you're not really getting upgrades not really worth your resin to be there anymore after all a domain is only efficient if you actually have a need for it so here towards the end i've impromptu decided to make a uh, kind of a tier list this first one will be me ranking how resin efficient i think these domains are generally this list would change wildly from person to person depending on what characters you own but i can't possibly predict that so this is just going to be under the assumption that everybody is available or you could roll for anybody and i do believe that the dendro set and the new set are going to be up there i think they're going to be very strong sets one is kind of a competitor to emblem for some characters and the other is the dendro set which supports a brand new element so a lot of us are going to be spending our resin there I have Crimson Witch so high because it's just such a strong set on characters that can use it. When you can utilize a set really well, god is it strong. That's why the domain just feels so painful to farm because you just feel like you have no other option. I have sets like Husk and the Vermilion Hereafter set down a little bit lower just because they are far more niche than Crimson Witches. Even the likelihood of us getting new characters that could use these sets is lower than something like Crimson Witch or Pale Flame. Okay, maybe not Pale Flame. We don't really get physical characters that fast, but you know, it's possible. I would at least say it's more likely than characters that hurt themselves constantly or geo defense scalers. And here's another one. This is what I would consider to be the 3.0 priority for the strong box if you're going to use it, which you should. Unless, of course, you are a brand new player, which then you might actually value five star artifacts as actual artifact experience more than someone who's been playing for a while. This is mostly because of two reasons. The first, you can actually farm artifact experience from artifact investigation spots every single day. And two, once you've been playing the game for a while, and you have a lot of artifacts, you're not going to be getting upgrades as often, which means you're not going to need artifact experience as often. It'll build up over time rather quickly as long as you're spending a majority of your resin in artifact domains, as most endgame players will end up doing. And on top of that, as you're trying to get upgrades, you're going to level some artifacts to like plus four, plus eight, plus 12. And at some point in that path, they might become duds and then they're just a big chunk of artifact experience just waiting around. And then on top of that, when you upgrade a piece that you have leveled to plus 20 and maybe nobody else needs it, well, that's a massive chunk of artifact experience. But back to the point, most players should be using the strong box. They should have been before this change. They most definitely should be using it after this change. I easily think Crimson Witch is one of the most valuable ones to be throwing in. Not only is Crimson Witch just exceptionally good on those it is good on, but I hate that domain. That domain is really annoying to farm. Not that that should be even taken into factor when you're considering what to spend in the strong box, you know? After all, resin is a little bit more important than spending a minute in the Crimson Witch domain compared to spending like 10 seconds in the Viridescent Veneer domain. Then there's the Viridescent set, which this isn't ordered, but if I did, it would probably be ahead of Crimson Witch because of how important it is. But it is also a lot easier to get a good EM set of Viridescent because really you just need the main stat and maybe some energy recharge stats really aren't going to provide as much. Wanderers is up so high because it's still good on characters like Melk Ganyu or Yanfei, as well as some others, but it's also a lot harder to get than most other sets because you can't deliberately farm this from a domain. Noblesse is an exceptional support set and if you're not going for two-piece Bloodstain, two-piece Pale Flame for like Eula or something for an easier time, Thundering Fury can be a good two-piece set, sometimes even a good fun four-piece to use on off-meta characters. You know, even like Hazo can use it to try to reduce the cooldown of his skill, which can be kind of a fun playstyle. Now the reason I put sets like Blizzard Stray or Heart of Depths down here is you should be farming these 
sets. You shouldn't be using your strong box for sets like these over sets like Crimson Witch and Viridescent, where if you don't get those artifact sets from your drops, you get a dud set like Maidens or Lava Walkers, and those really hurt. Of course, if you're really just trying to gear like Ayaka or Ganyu as fast as humanly possible, yeah, you might want to also strong box just to get as many artifacts as possible. But once you're in the stage where you're just trying to get upgrades, you should definitely be considering better options to just, just try to make your account's options as diverse as possible, you know? Having an Ayaka that can clear half of the Spiral Abyss in 30 seconds instead of 45 seconds is really nice and all. Then when a bunch of cryo enemies come and your Ayaka can't do anything, you're gonna wish maybe you spent a little bit more time on your Diluc, perhaps. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just trying to offer some guidelines, maybe for newer players, maybe for players who are a little bit lost on what this news means for how artifact farming works now, because this really did change everything. I legitimately think that some domains just aren't worth the effort anymore. You shouldn't spend resin there because the strong box is going to be just more efficient while you're spending your resin in better places. Like and subscribe for more content as we go into Sumero, probably more on like the guide side, you know, more pissing people off by saying resin isn't that bad later on. Patreon and my other socials are linked down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.